In the first part of this lesson, we will develop a technique for measuring the length of an arc. In other words, if you have a function like y equal to x squared, this is the graph of that function, we can call it an arc. What is the length of this arc? Is it possible to measure it? Well, if you have an arc like this, and if you divide these arcs into infinitely small, small sections, you can imagine that each of these sections is actually a straight line. And it is easy to measure the length of a straight line. And once you have the length of each of these little pieces, we can add them all together from x equal to a to x equal to b, or integrate them. That is the method that we are going to you know, develop in the first part of this lesson. In the second part, we will see if you have a curve like this, or any curve, and if you revolve this curve about an axis, now, what do you actually produce if you revolve a curve about an axis? You actually produce a surface. Is that right? Now, how do you find the area of such a surface? So, these are the two techniques that we are going to develop in this lesson. We will start by developing a method to measure the length of an arc. All right? Now, consider a curve drawn in the interval x equal to a to x equal to b. Here you have a curve drawn from x equal to a to x equal to b and we need to find the length of that arc. Now let's call this end of the curve as p and the other end as q. We want to find the length of the arc pq. Now, if dx is the x difference, if dx is the x difference, and dy is the y difference of the coordinates of p and q. You see, if the coordinate of p is x1, y1, and the coordinate of q is x2, y2, then this distance we call dx is x2 minus x1 and this is dy which is y2 minus y1 that has no difficulty understanding and the straight line distance pq is such that pq squared equal to dx squared plus dy squared is that right? that's the Pythagoras theorem now if P and Q are sufficiently close to each other, then the length of the arc PQ will actually be equal to the length of the straight line PQ, and that is the method we are actually going to use in this section. So when P and Q are very close to each other, in other words, the distance is very small, then the length of the line PQ equal to the length of the arc PQ. Well, if ds is the length of the arc, we will replace PQ by ds. What, is, what does ds stands for? ds is the length of the arc, <coughs> the length of the arc PQ. Then we have a ds squared equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Now, let's divide both uh, sides by dx squared, and what do you get? ds squared divided by dx squared equal to dx squared divided by dx squared plus dy squared by dx squared. Just divide each term by dx squared, and what do you get? That gives you <coughs> ds squared equal to, what I have done is, I have simplified it and then multiplied every term by dx squared. So we get ds squared equal to 1 plus dy squared over dx squared 
times dx squared. I hope you understand that state. Now this is 1 and the right side is 1 plus dy squared over dx squared and multiply that by dx squared that will give you ds squared. And what does ds stand for? ds is the length of the arc which is approximately equal to the length pq and when p and q are very very close to each other they are actually equal to each other. Well, now let's rewrite this. This will be 1 plus this can be written as dy by dx all squared. What does dy by dx stands for? The derivative of y with respect to x. So ds squared is 1 plus dy by dx all squared the quantity multiplied by dx squared. Now therefore to find ds what all we need to do is take the square root of both sides. Alright? That gives you ds equal to square root of 1 plus dy by dx or squared dx. Now, this is an expression for the distance between two points on a curve when that points are very close to each other. And once you have that, to find the entire distance s, what all we need to do is add all such ds's or integrate this ds from x equal to a to x equal to b that will give you the length of the arc all right so the arc length on the interval a b can be cut into the infinite number of such pieces that has these lengths and look at this now this is the length of the arc that we need to find. And to do that, what did we do? We cut this arc into infinite number of small pieces. Now here, I have shown that small piece to be rather big. But in the actual sense, these small pieces will be very small. So that the straight line distance and the arc distance will be the same. And the length of each of these arcs will be given by this expression. ds equal to square root of 1 plus dy by dx or squared dx. And what we then need to do is add such ds distances. ds1 plus ds2 plus ds3 plus ds4. There will be thousands and thousands. Is that right? Or simply integrate from x equal to a to x equal to b of the ds. That will give you the length of the arc from x equal to a to x equal to b. And so, here we have s equal to integral a to b of this quantity, which is square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. All right. Let's... Um, Look at that one more time. So, what is the expression for arc length of a function, f of x, on the interval a, b? Write it down on your own. s equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. There you go. Now, this is if the function is a function of x. If the function is a function of y, then what is the length of the arc measured from y equal to c to y equal to d? Can you write down a similar integral? Yes, it will be s equal to integral c to d of 1 plus f prime y all squared dy. So in the first case, it is the derivative of the function with respect to x. <clears throat> and in the second case, it is the derivative of the function with respect to y. A function of x, a function of y. All right, let's do a small problem. Find the length, find the arc length of the function y equal to 
x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 on the interval 0 to 4. All right, can you draw the graph of this and see how the arc look like? y equal to x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. All right, we don't really need to draw the graph of that once you have the equation that we developed. What are the things that we need to actually do here? If you remember the equation, we get s equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. So we need to start by finding dy by dx. We got y equal to x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. Can you find the derivative of this with respect to x? All right, so start with y equal to x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. What is dy by dx equal to? x to the power of 3 over 2, the derivative of that will be, <coughs> the derivative of x to the power of n is n x to the power n minus 1. <coughs> so, the derivative of x to the power of 3 over 2 is 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So you have dy by dx. All right, what's the next step? We need to find a square of this. Is that right? Look at the equation. The equation contains square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared. So we start with dy by dx and now find a square of it. So dy by dx is 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. What is 3 over 2 minus 1? 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 half. Okay, let's now take the square of it. dy by dx all squared is 3 over 2 x to the power of 1 half all squared. Well, you have no problem squaring 3 over 2. What do you get if you square x to the power of 1 half? x to the power of 1 half is square root of x. Square root of x raised to the power of 2 is x. So this will be 9 over 4 x. So, dy by dx all squared is 9 over 4x. All right, what's the next step? We need 1 plus dy by dx all squared. So, let's do that. 1 plus dy by dx all squared is 1 plus 9 over 4x. And that will be, take 4 as the common denominator, it will be 4 plus 9x over 4. Well, we haven't finished. If you look at our equation for the length of the arc, the integral contains square root of the quantity 1 plus d by bar dx all squared. So we now need to find the square root of this quantity. Square root of 1 plus d by bar dx all squared is square root of 4 plus 9x over 4. And we have now this quantity, and we know the limits a and b, a equal to 0, b equal to 4. Therefore, we are in a position to set up the integral. And before we do that, look at the uh, square root quantity here. We can split this into square root of 4 plus 9x divided by square root of 4, which is 2. That would make it easier for us to integrate. All right, and that will be divided by 2 is 1 half. So 1 half of square root 4 plus 9x. It is now easy to integrate that, and let's go and do it. So we got arc length equal to integral 0 to 4, 1 half square root 4 plus 9x dx. And 1 half comes out, we have 1 half times integral 0 to 4 square root 4 plus 9x dx. All right, tell me, give me a method to integrate this. How do you integrate this? Square root 4 plus 9x, that's the quantity inside the square root, and dx is outside. Well, 
To integrate, we make a substitution 4 plus 9x equal to u. When 4 plus 9x equal to u, we need to replace that dx also in terms of u. What do you do? Find the differential of the left side and the differential of the right side. Differential of 4 is 0, differential of 9x is 9dx, and the differential of u is du. So 9dx equal to du, therefore what is dx? dx equal to du over 9, or dx equal to 1 9th dx. So to integrate this, we will replace 4 plus 9x by u, and re replace dx by 1 9 to du. But we also need to replace our limits of integration because these limits are for x and we have actually replaced x by u. So we need to use this substitution to change the values of these limits. For example, when x equal to 0, what is the value of u? Well, when x equal to 0, come over and look at this. When x equal to 0, this will be 0, u will be 4. And when x equal to 4, what will be u equal to? 4 times 9 is 36 plus 4 is 40. So when x equal to 4, u equal to 40. That means this integral now becomes <clears throat> integral 4 to 40 square root of u times du over 9 or 1 9th du. <clears throat> so look at that again. S equal to 1 half integral 0 to 4 square root 4 plus 9 x dx now becomes 4 plus 9 x becomes u dx becomes 1 9 to du the lower limit is now 4, the upper limit is 16. <clears throat> there you go. No, upper limit is 40. Is that right? Yes. So that is 1 half integral 4 to 40 square root u du over 9. And this 9 on the denominator will come out, multiplied with this 2 will give me 1 over 18. Is that right? Yes. So that will be 1 over 18 integral 4 to 40 u to the power of 1 half du. That's easy to integrate. What is integral of u to the power of 1 half du? That is u to the power of 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 which is u to the power of 3 over 2 over 3 over 2. So that will be 1 over 18, u to the power of 3 over 2, over 3 over 2. And if you remember, this 3 divided by 2 on the denominator, this 2 will go up. And the 2 will cancel with the 18, leaving a 9 on the denominator. And the 9 times 3 is 27. So the constant number will be 1 over 27. I hope you understood this. This 3 over 2, the 2 will go up. That 2 will cancel with 18, leaving a 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So this will be 1 over 27, u to the power of 3 over 2, from 4 to 40. And now we replace the upper limit, then subtract, replace the lower limit. That will be 1 over 27, 40 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 to the power of 3 over 2. That should be okay. And that can be evaluated easily. Now, look at that. I can now write 40 as 4 times 10. Is that right? Now, if you look at this, a power raised to the power of, say, 3 over 2. The denominator of the power is the square root. So, if you write it like this, the 40 is 4 times uh, 10. 
Let me see if I can show that to you. All right, watch the simplification if you have difficulty. I'm going to simplify 40 raised to the power of 3 over 2. Remember, uh, when you raise a quantity to the power 3 over 2, it will be raised to the power of 3 times 1 half. A power 1 half is a square root. So, this can be written as square root of 40 raised to the power of 3. I hope that is understood. Now, that can be written as square root of 40 can be written as 4 times 10. And that quantity is raised to the power of 3. Now, this will be square root 4 times square root 10 raised to the power of 3. Now, that will be, watch this again, square root 4 is 2, that will be 2 raised to the power of 3 times square root 10 raised to the power of 3. Is that right? Now, 2 raised to the power of 3 is 8. And square root 10 raised to the power of 3 is 10 raised to the power of 3 over 2. Okay? But you've got to learn how to simplify these kind of factors. Very important to know that. Okay. So I hope now you understand how 40 raised to the power of 3 over 2 become 8 times 10 raised to the power of 3 over 2 minus what is 4 raised to the power of 3 over 2. Remember, 4 raised to the power of 3 over 2 is square root of 4 raised to the power of 3. That means 2 raised to the power of 3, that is 8. Okay, what is that equal to now? How do you simplify that? You can factor out an 8. That will be 8 over 27 times 10 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. And you can now use your calculator. This is approximately 9.073. And that is the length of the arc of this function in the given range x equal to 0 to x equal to 4. Okay, let's try another one. Find the length of the arc of the function y equal to cos x on the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. Set up the integral and evaluate it on your calculator because that when you set up that integral, you will not be able to integrate with the skills that you have learned so far. Now, first of all, can you picture what is this curve? It is y equal to cos x on the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. Now, can you picture the graph of y equal to cos x? What's the graph of y equal to cos x? Now, look at the graph I'm going to draw on the board for y equal to cos x. This is negative pi by 2, and this is pi by 2, that is pi, and that's negative pi. Now, how will the graph look like? It will be something like this. Is that right? Mm, that's right, yes. So, the graph of y equal to cos x on the interval from negative pi by 2 to pi by 2 will look like this. Now, draw it on your, on your calculator and check if this is right. Alright, how do you proceed to find the arc length? Now, look at that equation again. Arc length s equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. That means you've got to start by finding dy by dx. Then find 1, uh, then find dy by dx all squared. Then find 1 plus dy by dx all squared. And then take the square root of that. And finally, integrate that quantity from x equal to a to x equal to b. So we start 
by y equal to cos x. All right, what is dy by dx? What's the derivative of cos x with respect to x? dy by dx is negative sine x. All right, what's the next quantity we, we need to find? Find the square of dy by dx. So dy by dx all squared is sine squared x. So we have now found dy by dx all squared. We now need 1 plus dy by dx all squared. And that will be 1 plus sine squared x. Well, and finally, what is square root of that quantity? It will be square root of 1 plus sine squared x. We have now this complete quantity. We now need to integrate this from x equal to negative pi by 2 to x equal to pi by 2 to get the length of the arc from x equal to negative 2 to uh, negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, s equal to negative pi by 2 to pi by 2, square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. And we know what this quantity is. What is that quantity? It is square root 1 plus sine squared x. And actually, you haven't developed any skill to find this integral. And so what we're going to do is, do that on the calculator. Now, how many of you know how to use your calculator to do this integration? Okay, I'm going to show you how we can do it on the TI-84. If you have a TI-83, the keystrokes are basically the same. So, you can either use the TI-84 or TI-83. But before that, let me turn off this light. To do this integration, we access the math menu. That's the math menu there. So click on math. Follow the movement of my cursor. Click on math. And now the down arrow until you reach the integration operator. And that is number 9. Finite integral. So enter. Finite integral of what? We have a square root quantity, so second square root. Now square root of what? It'll be 1 plus sine squared x. Now watch how I write sine squared x. Start with a parenthesis and write sine x. You notice that x is in parenthesis. And now one more parenthesis and raise it. See how we raise it to a power of 2? Now that is how you write sine squared x. The quantity sine x raised to the power of 2. And now, because we are taking the square root of all this quantity, close the parenthesis. That is square root, that parenthesis, to this one. So we have now the quantity entered fully. We have to integrate it with respect to x. Look at the way I do it, comma x comma what's the lower limit negative negative sign is at the bottom negative pi by 2 no I didn't get that right so I've got to go back and say negative pi by 2 pi divided by 2 and comma positive pi by 2. Alright, and end parenthesis and enter. That gives you 3.82 as the value of that integral. That means the length of the arc of the cosine function from negative pi by 2 to pi by 2 is actually 3.82. Well, we have now evaluated the, def the definite integral uh, using TI-84. As I said, you can also use TI-83 and use this keystroke. Press math, then number 9. Number 9 will give you the, the integration operator. Then second x squared, 1 plus. Look at the way you write sine squared x comma, the parenthesis. Now follow these keystrokes if you did not follow when I showed it. 
and uh, it will be like this. I'll give you 3.82 as the value of this. Remember that it's an approximate value, not the exact value. Okay, let's do another one. A barn is 100 meter long, 40 meter wide. A cross section of the roof is an inverted catenary. An inverted catenary is something like this. You see, when you put the barn, the roof will be over there, and when you look from one side, what you see is the inverted catenary. And the equation for the inverted catenary is y equal to 31 minus 10 times e to the power of x over 20 plus e to the power of negative x over 20. Well, this is a special type of function, is that right? Yes. Now find the area of the roof of the barn. Find the area of the roof of the barn. Have you got a picture of what that barn looks like? Let me see if I can show it to you. Actually, the barn will be something like this. And the catenary is what you see that edge there. This is the curve which we call the catenary. So, how do you find the area of the roof? This is the whole of the roof. The area of the roof is width multiplied by length. Actually, the width is what becomes the catenary. So, if you can find the length of the catenary, which will be the length of that curve, multiply it with the length of the roof. That is the length of the roof, it's given to be 100 meters. So, the length of the catenary, that is this, multiplied by the length of the roof will give you the area of the roof. That's what we are after. Okay, let's do that now. So, I have uh, now drawn, actually, that's the barn. Now, you can see that's the length of the roof there. This is the catenary. All right? So, we will keep the center of the barn to be the origin. So, that's the origin there. This is our catenary. And the length of the barn goes, the barn is actually that way. This is the length which is 100 meter. So, that's the origin. Since the width of the barn is 40 meter, the width of the barn, this is 40 meter, that means this will be negative 20 and that will be positive 20. Is that right? That's the advantage of taking the origin at the center. Now, the length of the barn is 100 meter. That is 100 meter. So what we need to do to find the area of the barn is to find the length of the catenary and the equation of the catenary is given. So we use the arc length equation to find the length of the catenary then multiply it with the length of the roof. That will give you the area of the roof. All right. So the inverted catenary is, the, is like the upper part of an ellipse. Is that right? Doesn't it look like the upper part of an ellipse? If that is the upper part and that's the lower part, you actually get an ellipse. Well... And the equation of the catenary is y equal to 31 minus 10 times e to the power of x over 20 plus e to the power of negative x over 20. That's right. And once you find the length of the catenary, multiply that with the length of the roof. That will give you the area of the roof. All right, let's start. We start by finding the length of the arc. And what is the equation for the length of the arc? Integral, x equal to negative a to b, so negative 20 to 20, square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared, which means we need to find dy by dx of this, and take the square of that, and then take the square root of that whole quantity. Is that right? Okay, that's a challenge, so let's get going. We got y equal to this is our function. What is dy by dx? 
Let's find the derivative of that. The derivative of 31 is 0. And this quantity multiply by negative 10. So that negative 10 will stay as it is. And let's find the derivative of each of these. Remember, the derivative of e to the power of ax is a e to the power of ax. Is that right? Okay, let me write down and see if I can show that to you. All right. Now, you have e to the power of ax, the derivative d by dx of e to the power of ax is a e to the power of ax. Now, look at this. What is the derivative of e to the power of x over 20? Now remember, x over 20, I'm going to write it like this. e to the power of 1 over 20x. So our a, this a, is 1 over 20. So the derivative of that will be, if you find the derivative of this, d by dx of e to the power 1 over 20x will be 1 over 20 e to the power of well, 1 over 20x or x over 20. Is that right? So, the derivative of, the derivative of e to the power of x over 20 will be 1 over 20 e to the power of x over 20. Similarly, the derivative of e to the power of negative x over 20 will be negative 1 over 20. So that negative sign will come there. Alright, so watch this. 1 over 20 e to the power of x over 20 is the derivative of that. Minus, how does the minus sign come? Because the derivative of x over negative x over 20 is negative 1 over 20. So negative 1 over 20 e to the power of negative x over 20. That is the derivative of that quantity. Okay, let's get out of this and continue. So we found the derivative dy by dx. What is the next step? We want to find the square of this. And to do that, first of all, let's simplify this. The 1 over 20 is common, so that would be 10 over 20. The negative 10 over 20 times e to the power of x over 20 minus e to the power of negative x over 20. I hope that is no problem. What all we did is we factored out this 1 over 20. That gave you that negative 10 over 20. That negative is right there. And that will be negative 1 half e to the power of x over 20 minus e to the power of negative x over 20. <clears throat> well, that is dy by dx. We need to find dy by dx raised to the power of 2. <clears throat> so what do we do? Find the square of that. The square of that will be 1 fourth. The square of negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. e to the power of x over 20 minus e to the power of negative x over 20 all square. <clears throat> okay, what is a minus b all squared? a minus b all squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So the square of this. Now remember, in order to square a quantity like this, what all you need to do is multiply the power by 2. Is that right? So what is the square of e to the power of x over 20? The square of e to the power of x over 20 is e to the power of x over 10. The square of e to the power of 5 over 2 is e to the power of 5. So square of e to the power of x over 20 is e to the power of x over 10. And the square of this will be e to the power of negative x over 10. All right, so let's write down that quantity. That will be 1 fourth, 
e to the power of x over 10, that's the square of this, then minus the middle term. The middle term is 2 times a times b. So minus 2 times e to the power of x over 20 times e to the power of negative x over 20. That gives you minus 2ab plus the square of the last term. The square of the last term is e to the power of negative x over 10. So what we have is we squared one half, that gave you one fourth. The square of this, a squared minus 2ab minus 2ab plus the square of b. That's what we have here. Now why have I used the red color here? What is the value of e to the power of x over 10? e to the power of x over 20 times e to the power of negative x over 20. What is x to the power of 2 multiplied by x to the power of negative 2? Now remember, when the bases are the same, let me show that to you. I know some of you will have problems. Now, x over 2 times x over 3 is x to the power of 2 plus 3 which is x to the power of 5. x to the power of 2 times x to the power of negative 2 is x to the power of 2 minus 2 x to the power of 0 which is 1. So e to the power of x over 20 times e to the power of negative x over 20 is e to the power of 0, is that right? When you add these, and that will be 1. So, what you see here is the middle term, this quantity in red is actually 1. So, what will be the next step? That will be, I'm going to use this as 1, and then distribute the 1 fourth. So that would be e to the power of x over 10 divided by 4 minus, this is 2, multiply that 2 with 1 fourth gives you 1 half. So that would be minus 1 half plus e to the power of negative x over 10 divided by 4. I hope you understood that. First of all, these two multiplied will give you 1 and then distribute the 1 fourth. There you are. Okay, this is dy by dx all to the power of 2. What is the next step? We've got to find 1 plus dy by dx, the quantity raised to the power of 2. Now, to do that, first of all, let's organize this. Can I write e to the power of x over 10 over 4 as the square of e to the power of x over 20 divided by 2? Yes. Now, remember, we said the square root of e to the power of x over 20 is... No. The, the square of, if you take the square of e to the power of x over 20, it will be e to the power of x over 10. And the square of 2 is 4. So, e to the power of x over 10 over 4 can be written as e to the power of x over 20 divided by 2, that quantity raised to the power of 2. Did you understand that? Because if you raise the numerator to the power of 2, you get this. 2 squared is 4. All right, minus 1 half. And how do you write this as the square of a quantity? e to the power of negative x over 10 over 4 can be written as e to the power of negative x over 20 over 2, the quantity raised to the power of 2. Alright, so this is now of a form a squared minus 1 half plus b squared. Right, that is divided by dx to quantity raised to the power of 2. We want 1 plus that quantity raised to the power of 2. What all we need to do is, on the right side, you add a 1. That is 1 plus all this quantity. 
And the only change that will come there is 1 minus 1 half will become positive 1 half. So, as a result of adding this 1, this negative 1 half became positive 1 half. So that's what you have. All right. Now, is it possible to write this as the square of a single quantity? If you remember what we did here. Now, look at this, what we did here. This one. This quantity is actually the square of something like this. So what is this? a squared plus one half plus b squared. Can you write it as a plus b raised to the power of two? Yes, you can. Look at this. Our a is e to the power of x over 20 over two plus our b is e to the power of negative x over 20 over two. And this quantity raised to the power of 2. Now, if you have difficulty, try and expand it. This will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Is that right? Now, that will be... Let's, let's uh, expand the right side. Let me show, try and show that to you. And I'm going to expand this quantity. Alright, remember when you square this, what will happen when you square this? This will become e to the power of x over 10 and this will become 4. So, square of that will be e to the power of x over 10 over 4. That is the square of this, if you square that. Plus 2ab 2 times a is e to the power of x over 20 divided by 2. b is e to the power of negative x over 20 divided by 2 plus square of the last one will be e to the power of negative x over 10 divided by 4. Now look at this when you expand this a plus b all squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now what is this? Here this 2 and 2 goes, there is a 1 half left. And this multiplied by this will be 1, which is therefore our 1 half. So obviously this quantity is written as the sum of a and b raised to the power of 2. So that's a little challenging for some of you. I know that. But uh, try and understand that algebra there. So what we have done here is this quantity is a squared plus 1 half plus b squared is written as a plus b all to the power of 2. When you expand it, actually it comes to this. The reason is the middle term 2ab will simplify to be 1 half. Okay, well that will make our life a lot easier because this quantity is 1 plus dy by dx all squared. We wrote it as the square of a quantity. Therefore, what is square root of that quantity? Square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared is square root of this quantity, which is therefore, take away that power 2, is this. And what all we need to do now is to integrate this quantity from x equal to negative 20 to x equal to positive 20. That will give you the length of that catenary. There you go. So s equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. And that will be integral negative 20 to 20. If you cannot see this properly, you can actually see it in the PowerPoint that you have printed out. It will be integral negative 20 to 20 
e to the power of x over 20 over 2 plus e to the power of negative x over 20 over 2 dx. All right. Now the challenge is for you to integrate each of these quantities. All right. Let me see whether you can do that. How do you integrate e to the power of a quantity? All right. Tell me, what is integral of e to the power of ax? Integral e to the power of ax is e to the power of ax divided by a. Now, in our case, it is, it is different, is that right? Yes. So, what is integral of e to the power what is integral of e to the power x over 20 over 2? Now, if you look at this, let me write it like this. That will be 1 half e to the power 120 times x. Is that right? x over 20 is 120 times x. And if you integrate this, 1 half can be out. And that will be, if you remember the first thing I showed you, integral e to the power of ax is e to the power of ax over a, and our a here is 1 over 20. So that will be 1 half e to the power 120 over x is x over 20, divided by 1 over 20. Our a is 1 over 20. And remember, divided by 1 over 20, this 20 will go up. That will give you 20 divided by 2 is 10 e to the power of x over 20. Is that right? Integral e to the power of x over 20 all divided by 2 will be this. Alright, you need to practice integrating these quantities. Alright. So what we have here, let's integrate each of these terms. So that will be one half times, one half is that two there, one half times, e to the power of x over 20 divided by one over 20, that is integrating that, minus, why, why does the minus sign come? Because when you integrate, there will be a negative 1 over 20. Now, if this sign, if you want to leave that as positive, it will be plus 1 half e to the negative x over 20 divided by negative 1 over 20. It is that negative that makes that sign negative there. Alright, so what is now this equal to? As I told you, this 20 will go up. It will be 20 divided by 2 e to the power of x over 20 minus 20 divided by e to the negative x over 20. And we can factor out that 10. So that 10 times e to the power x over 20 minus e to the power negative x over 20. And the lower limit is negative 20. The upper limit is positive 20. Let's apply the upper limit first. Replace x by positive 20. That would be 10 times. Watch how that is done. The upper limit is 20. e to the power of 20 divided by 20 minus e to the power of negative 20 divided by 20. The upper limit minus now the lower limit. e to the power of negative 20 divided by 20 minus e to the power of, look at this, this negative minus 20 become positive 20 divided by 20. Now the upper limit minus the lower limit, that quantity is multiplied by 10. And what is this? It will be 10 times e to the power of 1 minus e to the power of negative 1 minus e to the power of negative 1 minus e to the power of 1. Simplify that. That will be 10 times, that is e minus 1 over e. Is that right? e to the power of negative 1 is 1 over e. 
minus 1 over e plus e, that will be e plus e is 2e, minus 1 over e, minus 1 over e is minus 2 over e. So that will be 10 times 2e minus 2 over e. And therefore, I can factor out a 2, and that 2 multiplied by 10 will give you 20. So the length of the arc is 20 times e minus 1 over e. This is the exact value. We can maybe find an approximate value for that by your calculator, by putting this on your calculator. And if you want to find the area of the roof, area of the roof will be the length of the catenary, which is 20 times e minus 1 over e, multiplied by the length of the roof, which is 100. So that will be 20 times 100 is 2,000 times e minus 1 over e. And that is the length of the catenary. Now this has been a very good problem actually. I want you to practice this and see whether you can do this on your own.